Welcome to Kraken's Garage. I'm your host, Eric. Today we're going to review the Benelli TNT 135, something new that's North America as Benelli kind of sticks their uh, little toe in back in the North American market with a small bike. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's get to it. I normally don't go into a review and cover all the specs. This bike is so new, hardly any people know about it in North America, so I'm gonna kinda of cover the specs more in detail. Hopefully give some information to people thinking about this bike. First of all, the few that own it call it the Grom Killer. It, its direct competitors are the Grom and the uh, Kawasaki Z125. Both of those are 125 cc's and this is 135 cc's, so it has a slight advantage there. We'll talk about the uh, pros and the cons, whether this is worth your, your hard-earned money versus buying the old faithful Honda Grom or Kawasaki Z125. Regarding the specs, the width, excluding the mirrors, is 29.7 inches, so about 30 inches wide. <clears throat> For those of you that lane split in California. Ground clearance is 6.3 inches. Wet weight with oil and gas is 266 pounds. Uh, total capacity that it can carry is 330 pounds. Usable gas tank size is 1.9 gallons, US gallons that is. Seat height is 30.7 inches. Pretty tall, and surprisingly tall actually, uh, for what it is. I'm six foot four, and believe it or not, I fit on it nicely. I'll have to get a picture of me on it for to give you a perspective on that view. Specs, it's a single cylinder, four stroke, oil cooled, four valves, single overhead cam, double spark plug. Displacement is 134.7 cc's. One of the things that drives me nuts is Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki will say, here's your 200cc scooter or bike. And when you look up the specs, you find out it has 164 cubic cc engine or, you know, come on, man, that didn't even close to 200. This one is actually spot on. So I'm very happy to say that uh, at least it's accurate. It's rated out at 11.5 uh, horsepower uh, at 8,500 RPM. It redlines close to 10 grand. Gets a little buzzy when you get above 8,500, like any thumper for that matter. The frame is a trellis frame. I'll throw some pictures up on the screen. It's a true trellis frame, much like a Ducati or a, possibly a KTM Duke, something like that. It's not a faux one in any way. Uh, front suspension is 41 millimeters upside down forks, front suspension travel, 120 millimeters, rear suspension, swing arm with side mounted shock absorber with an adjustment spring preload. Max torque is 7.4 pounds. It's a wet sump system on it. It's electronic fuel injection with a 28 millimeter throttle body for all you gearheads out there. The exhaust system is an underbody muffler with dual exhaust, catalytic converter, an oxygen sensor. Oxygen sensor is loaded, located right up here on the front of the pipe. And believe it or not, this big can underneath here is the uh, catalytic converter. And we'll get into that in another video. So I have some exciting stuff coming up on that. Uh, the clutch is a wet clutch. It's a five-speed gearbox. Huge advantage over the Grom and the Z125 with only the four-speed gearbox. Final drive is a chain drive. It is a standard chain, it is not a sealed O-ring chain. So I don't expect longevity out of this chain. That comes into why the price is also quite handy to begin with right out of the box. I'm okay with that. Ignition is a Delphi MT-05. Spark plug that comes with it is a Bosch A7RC. It's an electric starting. It does not have a Kickstarter. The frame is a trellis on the upper and it's a cast on the lower. Front brakes are 220 millimeter, 
single disc with two piston caliber. The rims are aluminum alloy. Front rim is 12 inches by 3.0. The rear brake is 190 millimeters. Single disc with single piston caliper. The tires are 12 inch. The tires that fit on this bike on the front is a 12070ZR12 and on the rear a 13070ZR12. You can get knobby tires, you can get uh, city grips for it. It's a pretty standard tire size, so you have a nice selection of tires that are available for it. The ones that come on this one are called a Cordial. Uh, jury's still out whether I like them. I mean, they're just a, a, an inexpensive Chinese tire and we'll go from there. Uh, I don't expect them to handle all that well, and I look forward to getting, you know, a set of city grips or something like that on it. Okay, my limited experience on the bikes thus far is that what a hoot to ride. I had to see what all the hubbub was about on the uh, Grom or the uh, Kawasaki Z125 Pro or this one for that matter. In my opinion, I've ridden all three. Yes, this bike is indeed the Grom killer. Benelli has never made that statement. They've never boasted about it. That comes from Kraken's garage, so take it with a grain of salt. That fifth gear, the oil cooler, the uh, dual spark plug, 10 millimeter wider front forks than the Grom, etc., just add up to a whole lot more value. Will it last up as good as the Honda or the Kawasaki? Time will tell. And if it doesn't, You'll read about it and see about it here on my channel. I'm going to set this bike up for sport touring, and I'm going to do some long distance grinding on it, and we'll see how she does. Coming up next, we'll talk about the service intervals. You have your standard 600 mile uh, checkup uh, during break-in, and they ask that you do check the valves. I'll do that. I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not. We'll see. The next service oil change is at 3,000 miles. Next one is 5,500 miles, then 8,000 miles, 10,500, and then 13,000 miles. So roughly the oil changes are roughly every 2,500 to 3,000 miles per the manual. By the way, the manual, this is all you get. Crazy, when I buy a Honda or something like that, they're five times thicker than this just on the uh, safety information that uh, Honda gives you. Uh, so this is kind of meat and potatoes, bare bones. So if you switch to synth synthetic oil, I would uh, probably stretch it three, 4,000 miles and then take a peek at it and see if it's deteriorated. If it has, then, you know, go back to change it at 3,000 miles. Okay, for the digital gauge, we have our gas gauge here, your miles per hour, which you convert to kilometers per hour, and you have a 24 hour clock. No, you can't do set it up for a 12 hour clock and your miles. Right here is where I was talking about where they could have put a gear indicator. It looks like it was meant to have one there. I really love the uh, analog uh, tachometer. It's easy to re read on a glance on the fly for me. May not be for everybody, but it's great for me. You have your standard idiot lights up here. Neutral, check engine, high beam, turn signal. It's kind of nice they have a uh, right and left turn signal rather than one basic one for both of them. Uh, you also have uh, your flash to pass shows up on here as well. We also have uh, four-way flashers, which I strongly recommend you use when riding in uh, bad rain or something like that so people see you. Now down here, we have the miles. You have a two-button system here. We have two uh, trip meters. I use the first one as a secondary gas gauge. I know roughly how many miles I can get per gas tank. Second uh, one is how many miles since the last service. So it makes it easy, a quick check for how many miles since the last uh, oil change I made on it. Here's a look at the uh, seat. And where my butt hits is kind of back here. So what I'm gonna do is take this rear section seat off and I'm gonna shave the foam down and basically make it a solo seat where I'm sitting kind of from here forward. Alrighty, here's my first uh, attempt at uh, motovlogging. Let's see how it goes. I've done my research and hopefully it'll be a fairly quiet environment by the mic inside the helmet. see she's kind of happy uh, at seven eight grand on the tack that's kind of where the power band is 
And right now I'm in fifth gear and she's tootling along at 7,200 RPM. So roads like this, this country road is what this very bike is intended for in my honest opinion. Just carving up these back roads is where it's at. Good gosh, it's so much fun. And here's where I start to continue to try and trust the cordial tires. <laughs> so, my thoughts on this particular bike are for 2600 bucks. It's quite a bit cheaper than the, the Grom or the Kawasaki. I think with the larger 10 millimeter, larger forks, fuel injection, dual disc brakes, overhead valve, four valve motor, fifth gear on the transmission, make it a crazy good value. What it all boils down to is whether or not you want to roll the dice on a Chinese product and will it last. And there's lots of arguments on Chinese products. I mean, my gosh, it's hard not to buy anything made in China, at least here in uh, the United States or North America. Clearly the phone I'm using, my Samsung Galaxy, is made in China. Just about everything on my person is made in China, so welcome to globalization. China can make good quality products. The, what this boils down to, is this bike a good quality product? And there's not enough data, at least, that I've been able to research to tell. Hello. Thanks for jumping out in front. At least for the, what I've been able to tell is that, yes, there's people that have 10,000 miles on them and have had minimal problems. Uh, there's also always going to be people that do have problems and invariably uh, I have to question, did you maintain it well? Did you keep track of everything? Did you check the bolts? Did you replace the oil? You know, all the basic, basic stuff. And we'll do videos on that later. Uh, general walk-arounds of your bike, periodic maintenance uh, that you should do, uh, checking the air in your tires, uh, just normal stuff that's going to keep you alive. What you don't want to be is on this puny bike hiked over in a turn at 60, 65 miles an hour and have it do a hiccup and not perform to your expectations. So, going off on tangent here. Back on topic, the my personal opinion is two thumbs up once twice for this bike and I feel like every review that I'm giving is double thumbs up you know it's kind of silly because I do so much research I pretty much know exactly what I'm getting into before I even uh, make the purchase so I'm not I'm not an idiot I'm not gonna go out and buy a rotten bike just so I could do a, a review that's less than stellar I hope you get the idea, so moving forward. Coming up next in Kraken's Garage and Adventures, we're going to do some cool mods to this bike and have some fun doing it. I'm going to show you how to and what we can do to jazz it up a little. As if Lizard Green isn't jazzed up enough already, let's pimp it out a little more. Hell yeah! So, are you enjoying this beautiful country road? It's getting ready to rain. We're about to have another frog strangler. I've been dodging frog stranglers all week. Getting hammered with the rain. And uh, I'm trying to squeeze this quick ride in and test out of the vlog setup in between the rainstorms. Got a pretty thorny sound for it with the stock muffler. Tell me in the comments down below what you think about this bike. Are you a Downing Thomas? It's Chinese. It's going to be crap. Good luck with that, Kraken. You know, or do you like the visual looks of it? Do you think it will be a winner or a loser in North America? They have another cool one, a 302S, I think it is, in the same 
iguana green um, that would be cool later on down the road maybe I don't know time to wrap up this video so let's go over the pros and cons the obvious I've stated many times the advantages it has in technology over the Grom so we won't beat that to death anymore one thing I personally love is the oil cooler. On a thumper, I think it's imperative to have because you're really working that engine hard. Uh, so it saves me the trouble of chasing one down and having to install it. The analog tack, I really like the uh, ability to quick read it at a glance and get my eyes back on the road. It's much easier for me, maybe not, not be for you, to glance at a, a analog tech versus a digital bar graph or something of that nature and decipher what information it's trying to tell me. It has wonderful brakes. For generic brakes, the thing stops on a dime. So what can I say? Thumbs up for me on that. Amazing motor. It absolutely rocks. It, it It's hard to believe 135 cc motor and I'm sustaining 60, 65, no problem for extended distances. Amazing. Mediocre suspension. Why is something mediocre that I'm putting on my pro list? Well, the front suspension is great. The rear suspension is a little undersprung and I need to adjust it to my weight. With that said, I expected bottom of the barrel on the suspension department. I'm happily amazed at how the mediocre suspension has performed to date. So super excited to have the suspension that came on the bike. The looks, I love the look of the MV Augusto Brutale. That's exactly what it reminds me of all the way across the board, the designing cues on it. I think it's beautiful. It's subjective, but this is my list of pros. I love the lizard green. I think it's great. It just pops in the sunshine. It's very cool. Cons, the mirrors, show my elbows when I'm going down the road. I don't know what it is with bikes and their ability to have uh, mirrors that show your elbows. They must be designed for much smaller people. That's all I could say. Speedometer error, about five miles per hour off according to my GPS. Why can't a manufacturer get the speedometer right? If the rest of the world can do it in cars, planes, trains, and automobiles, why can't you do it on a motorcycle and a scooter? That is always something I've frowned upon. The seat, I can adjust that but be, I'm so tall and lanky, to be fair, I can't really say that's a con because of the size of me, but I'll get that handled. That's easily uh, taken care of. Cordial tires with a question mark. Reason why I say that is I don't fully trust them yet. I probably never will because they're kind of a no name brand, low end tire, and I know that going into it. So the sooner I get them replaced, the better. I'm probably not giving them a fair shake, but that's me. Long front turn signals. I'll take a picture of them. They're, they're horrific, and that's to meet DOT standards here in the United States. I'll trim those down and alter them accordingly when I get time. The uh, gear indicator space that's on the gauge cluster that is not being utilized, that's a, that, that's a very inexpensive fix that they could have thrown on it. I thought it would have been nice if they would have had it because you're shuffling through the gears with such a small motor and five gears. It would have been nice to know. Last thing is the kickstand. The kickstand is not switched to the motor to cut it off in the event you put it in gear. So you are able to ride away with the kickstand down. Those of this have been doing a long time when all bikes came that way. Had some harrowing experiences riding off with your kickstand down and trying to make a left hand turn and laying your bike down. Really need to be aware of that. I'm just giving you a heads up. Please pay attention. 90 subscribers from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Another one. This is the ghost of Daisy May. In a previous life, I think she was a ballerina by the way she acts. All right, all right. Like and subscribe, go away. Please, please quit haunting me, please. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you wanna see more, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Peace. And remember, folks, no rides when you can because it's good for ya!